All right, we all know this tasty, iconic riff, but today what we're doing is we're breaking down why it works. Why are we doing that? Because when you know why it works, you know how it works, and you can take these ideas, and in your next jamming, you can add your own Jason Mraz style riff, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in and break it down real quick before we get started. If you like this kind of content, new ukulele tutorials every single Wednesday and Saturday, smash that subscribe button. Tabs for this lesson up here in the notes by becoming a Patreon, cheaper than a cheap cheeseburger. You know you want to. 10 Thumbs t-shirts up there as well. Skype lessons one-on-one. -on -one. But if you came just because you want to get tasty, that's cool, I dig it and I respect it. Grab that ukulele, brain attention span, follow me on in and let's break this lesson down right now. Come on in. Cool, so we're gonna be breaking down this riff in the key of C major. The original is in the key of B major, but this goal is not so much to teach you exactly the riff, because if you look up in the links, I have the studio version of the song with the riff and an easy strummer version. I want you to know more um, why it works and how it works, because then I'm gonna show you how we can create our own Jason Rast style riffs. So what we're gonna do is, the first piece, well, let's listen to the riff one time. Okay, now the first part happens over a C chord. If you make a bar shape based on this e, um, a, mi or a major chord, you get five, four, three, three. This is a C chord as well. Now watch what happens when I remove my ring finger and my middle finger. Hey, that feels familiar, doesn't it? We're playing a C note and a G note. We're sliding up to a D and an A. These notes, C, G, and A, the root, the fifth and the sixth of the scale of C major, are gonna sound great and relatively neutral over your C chord, but you can also think about it as just a little bit of movement, but resolving within the chord. So we're doing something called chord tones. And what a chord tone is, it's a tone in the chord. So that riff is gonna stick or harmonize really well with your C chord. The next piece goes, which means it starts off the same. Repetition is good, everyone. Repetition with these ideas is really good. But it's gonna finish two and three. Well, why is that? Because it finishes on a G chord. So what we've done is we've taken this same repetition, but this time we're finishing with a B note and a G note, which are both part of the G chord, right? And that's what resolution is. That's why these things harmonize, that's why they stick together. Okay, the next little piece of the riff goes. Well, where's that coming from? What, what, if it's over an A minor, then why is it all crazy up here? Well, let's look at the notes. We have an E note. How do I know that? C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. And on the fifth fret up here, we have an A note. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. If we make an A minor, we see we have an A, C, E, and A note, meaning E and A are both part of our A minor chord. You can see that if we were to make this A minor shape, which is four, three, four, excuse me, five, four, three, excuse me, five, four, five, three. This is an A minor, and that's how we see that, okay? Now, last bit of the riff goes. Well, what's going on there? We're holding on to our A note, but we're moving our E up to an F. And this part of the riff resolves over the F chord, which has both an F note and an A note, folks. So, we're just playing two chords, our chord tones in the key of F. So we got two things going on here. We have repetition, and we have chord tones. Boom, C. Boom, G. E. We get away from the repetition a little bit, a little variety is good, into our F chord. So that's why that fits seamlessly over a C, G, 
A minor, F. Okay? So let's take a look at a progression that goes. Alright? And that's going to be a D minor, introducing a new chord, to an E minor. Down, up, mute, up, up, down. 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 Okay, that'll happen three times. And that'll happen three times, and the fourth time through, you're just gonna go one, two, three, four on the C. So let's look at the um, chord progression really quick. Down, up, mute, up, up, down. Down, up, mute, up. Let's say this is a song that I have, I really, really like it, but I want to add a riff at the beginning of it to give it a little more life and make it a little more memorable. This is what I came up with. Okay? So, how does that work? Well, my D minor, I'm playing the second fret of the C string and the first fret of the um, E string, which if we make our D minor are chord tones. Now, if I make an E minor, we'll see I'm playing four and three. So between the D minor and the E minor, I'm just experimenting with two, one, and four, three, and going back and forth between these two ideas. And because the rhythm goes down, up, mute, up, oops, down, up, mute, up, I'm doing something similar. I'm going one and mute pluck. So it's two, second fret, first fret on the offbeat. One and mute, up. And then a mute again. One and mute, up, up, mute. One and mute, up, up, mute. That little up, because you cannot really strum in these two notes, is what's called like a ghost strum, or just a little percussive move. So we get to the last, the end, D minor. I'm gonna just pluck them both, mute, remove them both, pluck, mute. Because C and E come from our chord tones of our C chord. So we've taken this, and created this. All right, so that's how and why the Jason Raz riff works and how you can take your own chord progressions and create Jason Raz style riffs using chord tones, okay? TenThumbsPro.com, think about that t-shirt, think about becoming a Patreon, printable tabs up here that are gonna go more in depth with this. New ukulele every single Wednesday and Saturday. Subscribe and learn. Until next time, keep on rocking, keep on rolling. We love you here, um, and it's a pleasure to teach you how to play ukulele. Take care, everybody. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Money in the bank. Cool, so that was it. Now you have the power in your fingertips. You can make the riffs, you can make the hits, and you can make the million bucks, all right? Until next time, keep on rocking and rolling, keep on loving life, keep on playing ukulele, and if you know whose ukulele this is, leave a comment below. A friend of mine, maybe a friend of yours. Rock and roll, dudes. Take care.